Hi, my name is Julie Bush, and today we are going to be talking about React Context. Before we dive in, uh, let's take a look at uh, this uh, web page here, which is partially obscured, but uh, this is an article with very strong opinions on why you should not use this feature that we're about to dive into. Um, you may think that perhaps this is from um, a blog, someone with a grudge, someone whose project failed one time and they blame React, but really it is uh, from the React docs themselves. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, why this is here if it is so strongly dissuaded against um, or discouraged. So uh, React context, the forbidden feature. So uh, in this talk, we will cover why it is there, who it is for, and what it can do. So uh, React context is not at all similar to the context you may be familiar with in just uh, vanilla JavaScript with functions and so on. It is actually another way of relaying information to components. It works um, very much like props, except props are passed explicitly and uh, context is passed implicitly. So with props, as uh, we're all familiar with, um, you need to write down every time you want to pass a prop from one thing to another. And if you have intermediary uh, components um, that do not need the prop, that's too bad, they're getting it. Because if they have something inside of them that needs the prop, then uh, they need to pass it on. Um, to uh, demonstrate this, let's uh, take a look here at uh, some code. So you can see on the left, uh, we have our props uh, way of passing the name Sally down to the child div who will eventually render it. Um, in the grandparents div, we start by uh, having a rendering of the parent component. The name Sally is passed in as a prop. The parent then renders the child, which is passed in the prop again via this.props.name. And then child renders a div with this.props.name uh, displaying Sally on the screen. Context on the right uh, does the same thing, but you do not need to pass through the parent to get to the child. There are other things that do need to happen though in order for this arrangement to work. You'll notice that in the grandparent uh, component, um, there are a few new things here. You have child context types, which is going to denote the type of um, the data type of the context that is being passed. Uh, you'll need uh, one of those for any type of context you want to pass. So in this case, name will always be a string. And then below that, you have get child context, which is giving that the context to pass along. In this case, our name is Sally. And uh, then we are rendering our parent, uh, you'll notice, with no additional information um, added into that return line. Uh, we go down to parent, and again, there's uh, nothing else there. It's just returning the child, no props passed in. But then once we get to the child, you'll see that in order to retrieve the context, we need to put context types onto the child, and again, uh, specify the type, of, uh, uh, the type of context to expect. So child now knows I'm looking for a context, it's called name, it's going to be a string, and it gets that string and renders it in the div with this.context.name rather than this.props, and the result is the same. So um, let's talk about why then, uh, even though this doesn't seem very scary, why it is uh, strongly discouraged for you to use this. So. Um, Explicitly passing props does make it easier to track the flow of information through your app. That is um, something that you may or may not care about. Perhaps you think that you're just going to remember it and that's fine, I believe you. But um, this is a good point to make that when other people are looking at your code, it makes it much easier to reason about what information is flowing where. Also, there are better ways of handling state. Um, we're all familiar with Redux and React Redux, and these um, tools uh, really do everything we need them to do without muddying up the uh, React components. So using those 
um, readily available libraries um, is really a better solution. If you're using context to handle your state, um, you're just not doing things as cleanly as you should be or as efficiently as you could be. And then also, uh, there is a warning on the uh, documentation that we looked at earlier specifying that the context API is subject to significant change and may be unstable. So um, if you do write uh, an app or uh, anything else using context in your React component, at any time, without warning, it could cease to work. You would have to rewrite the whole thing anyway. That's not happening with props. Props are good, they're just gonna stay. So context is risky. You don't know whether or not you can rely on it. You don't know what they're gonna do next with it. So um, who is context for then? If context is uh, something that no one should ever bother using, why is it a thing that somebody wrote? Why does it exist? Um, context is actually used um, in libraries at a larger scale. When using context in a library, a library writer can integrate things within React but still would shield the user of the library from having to deal with the consequences if context were to suddenly change. You would not need to worry about using a library that used context so much. Um, the library writer would have to worry about making a library that uses context, but it's not your problem. And also the library writer can um, usually abstract away things uh, from us so that the library code is cleaner and we're not worrying about passing and receiving uh, context and so on and so forth. So uh, a react, um, an example of this in action is React Redux. React Redux is a binding library between Redux, the state management library, and React. And this is not source code from React Redux by any means. This is just a condensed example. But um, this is somewhat what's happening with the provider uh, component that React Redux gives to us. We put the provider component in our render, um, surround all our divs with it, and it passes the store down uh, the entire way. So you can see that in here, um, class provider is going to return the store, this.props.store, um, which will be passed into provider as a prop, as we've all seen before. And um, when it renders, it will just return its children but it is also going to specify that the type of uh, the context is an object. So that's how we get our store in the form that we get it in. Um, and then at the bottom there, we render it and pass in create store with the root reducer as a prop to provider who then takes it and shuttles it all the way down. Of course, here we haven't covered um, the connect function and the other things that React Redux gives us. But this is how React Redux is using context in particular to solve this problem. Um, another application uh, of context is a binding library that was made for uh, 3.js. 3.js is a, a library of uh, three-dimensional animations. Um, it is written in JavaScript made to be used directly with HTML. But now that React is in the game, um, there needs to be a way to bridge the gap. So, um, well, there that is. Um, it uses the WebGL renderer, um, 3JS that is, uh, to render animations on an HTML canvas element. So it does not actually build a full DOM, it just, has this one thing and then the JavaScript runs scripts that animate or illustrate whatever you want on the canvas without really modifying uh, the DOM itself so much. Um, so in order to uh, show how um, context is used to allow this to work with uh, React, let's take a look at the old way that 3.js was used. So here is an example of using 3.js in HTML. You can see that um, you have a canvas set up in the style tag, and then the whole body is just script. Um, this is all code from the 3.js library, so you may not be familiar with what all of these things do. That's okay. Um, 
I'm not that familiar either. So, you know, but you get what's happening. Um, there is um, very little actual HTML going on. It's all happening in JavaScript and just being implanted into one part. Uh, so now we are going to take a look at this in action. So this is an example of uh, 3JS that is incorporated uh, with this library, uh, React 3JS. Um, and uh, you can see what's happening. Uh, it is mesmerizing. And um, there are some things that I want to point out here. So we have movement, we have color, we have shapes, and so on. Uh, take a look at the DOM. Over here, you'll see that there is just the single canvas, and it covers the entire page when you highlight it. That's everything. That's, that's what we got here. But then down here, you'll see div hidden, and you'll notice many divs, all of which are seemingly rendering nothing. Well, they are rendering nothing. Um, they have uh, no words, not even class names or anything like that. You click on one, nothing's there. So you can see, though, that if you resize this, for example, the canvas is responding. So how's that happening? Uh, well, I do not want to show you too much of this because I feel like talking about um, rendering itself is a topic all to itself. But this is the very bottom of a very long file. This is part of the React 3JS library. And it is uh, rendering a div that is hidden here and all of its children. That's where those divs are coming from. So now to demonstrate why those divs are there, we can come over here to a project that was done by a group in the senior cohort of um, the last phase. And this is using uh, 3JS and React 3JS to uh, visualize music. So you can see here that we've still got our hidden div. Um, that's just the closing of the canvas. But you know, nothing seems to be going on here, but we have all these divs. You can come over here, pick a thing, and when you bring it on, you can see that there's something changing as the visualization appears and disappears. This is actually allowing you to use the React components modularly to create an invisible sort of div where all of the scripting is that is running the animations and the um, rendering. And you can use this invisible part of the div to make it interactive, because since these are all here in a tree form, that's how you can tell which things are available um, to be clicked on. And context, in this case, is used to pass click handlers, scripts, just functions, all sorts of things, all the way down this, so that all that's still happening is there's a canvas, but we have all of these fun things. And you can see, every time I add something to the screen here, the div is flashing. It's adding children every time we put one on there. So that's what those empty divs are doing. They are not actually rendering anything directly, but they're representing things that are being sent to the canvas. And so uh, let's come back to reality and uh, the epilogue. So um, to wrap up, uh, React context is best used by those writing libraries that interact with React. Um, it could fail at any time, but it probably won't go away. That is according to Dan Abramov, who is a developer who helped write Redux and also works now on the React team at Facebook. Um, and it is powerful, but potentially problematic if misused. So um, that's that. Uh, React context. Be careful, you've been warned. Thank you. <laughs>